Hello, and welcome to the first full-length episode of Listen Toys. Um, hopefully you've seen the Primer video I put up, just kind of explaining what this podcast's all about. But for those of you who didn't see it, basically uh, we're going to be listening to an album every episode, and just discussing it, basically. It's kind of like the format of Talk Toys, but it's narrowed down into one specific album. Um, and this episode, as you can see on screen right now, uh, we are discussing our very first pick, uh, which is The Album by Blackpink, a uh, K-pop band. Uh, now, I'd love to say there was some deep meaning to this choice or whatever, but there isn't. Uh, it we it, it was it was just kind of something I vaguely kind of wanted to listen to, and I roped three people into it. And who are these three people? Well, joining me today, uh, and hopefully just as part of the series, are my three regular guests. I don't know if I can call you guys guests, because I don't know what the podcast is without you guys. Acquaintances. Just like, regular cast members at this point. Yeah, it, it's just like, because otherwise, if none of you were here, it's just me talking to myself. So, <laughs> uh, Right, anyway, sorry. So one of them uh, is Dan. Hello. Uh, the other one is Tim. Hello. And the other other one is Tom. How's it going? Uh, and t- so I've tasked all of us with the uh, task of going off and listening to this album at least, you know, one or two times to kind of get yourself a bit familiar. And we're just going to chat about it, really. There's no there's, there's no regimented structure. We're probably going to go track by track because that makes the most sense. But... Before we can jump into that, you're probably asking, you're screaming at the screen, you're typing in all caps in the comment section, who the hell are Blackpink? Uh, although actually the all caps section would work fine because Blackpink is actually stylized in all caps. A lot of Asian bands do that, I've noticed. Uh, mm, they do, or have random capitals and non-capitals. Yeah, there's, there's actually a Japanese band I've been listening to recently called Empire, and it's all in capitals apart from I. I don't... Mm. Yeah, there you go. I don't understand. Anyway, right, sorry, G- getting off track already. So, Blackpink are a K-pop band. Uh, they consist of four members and were formed in the year 2016. <clears throat> um, so basically, in their history, they've had a few singles um, that did really well. And they kind of released them periodically between 2016 and 2020. And then 2020 was the release of THE ALBUM! which is also written in all capitals for some reason. Um, and yeah, so a few little fun facts. Uh, in 2020, the music video for How You Like That, which is the first track from this album, uh, it actually broke records for the most viewed music video in the first 24 hours of its release on YouTube, which is pretty impressive. Um, so yeah. Blackpink themselves uh, obviously consist of four members, as I mentioned, and they are Rosé, Jenny, Lisa and Jisoo. Um, they are also the most followed artist on Spotify, which again is pretty impressive. Holy shit. Really? Yeah. Jesus, that the, is, that, I did not realise they were that big. Uh, and to show how big they were, they even featured on Lady Gaga's rec- most recent album on the song Sour Candy. Uh, and to wrap it off, it is widely and regularly reported that Blackpink currently reside in your area, according to... So many of their songs. I don't. I don't understand the whole your area thing. I think that's their catchphrase. But they they just keep mentioning it. I feel like, uh, especially with travel restrictions at the moment, I feel like uh, should just stay in their area. Anyway, right. That that wraps it up. So Blackpink. Uh, I'd never heard of them until about two weeks before doing this podcast. To be honest, guessing the same for you guys. Yeah, I'd only uh, heard of them because I'd seen them featured on the Lady Gaga album. Ah, good point. Oh. No, I'm the same with Azira. Never heard of them. Never <laughs> heard of them. It's, um, same. So Until now. Just before we dive into it, just a little bit of background. Um, In terms of... Because obviously this is quite a specific genre, K-pop. I mean, it shares you know, stuff with the pop genre and whatever, obviously, and it's in Korean. Um, But I don't know about you guys. I've had... A little bit of experience with K-pop because I quite enjoyed uh, KDA, which is a League of Legends inspired kind of fake band, if that makes sense. It consists of four of the characters from League of Legends uh, who are actually 
real K-pop. Uh, there's Madison Beer, G Idol, and I can't remember the other two. Uh, so I- I'm kind of a little bit into K-pop, but really, really surface level. And yes, at the end of the 2020 wrap up, I did mention I had listened to uh, one or two tracks by BTS, and they were okay. Uh, have the rest of you ever listened to K-pop? Not really. No, no, I. <laughs> Um, but that's the thing. I I uh, went in it blind, and um, yeah, that's what I was kind of uh, hoping for for this episode, to be honest. Because I wanted to, <clears> I wanted <throat> to kick it off basically by being like, "Right, you ready? What's it going to be? An album in a genre none of us have really listened to." And you know, because that's that's what I'm kind of hoping this and Toys becomes as well. In that, I don't want us to get pigeonholed into like, "Oh, it's that other like rock album this week," or kind of like, "Oh, they're doing another like EDM thing," uh, you know, like a bit of variety. Right. So, unless anyone else has any uh, very very pressing uh, Blackpink comments, we'll dive into the album. Let's dive. Yeah. Right. Okay then. Let's go. So, uh, the album has. Uh, seven track? No, hang on. Eight. Eight tracks. That's the one. Eight Sorry, tracks. that's that's the one little bit of information I didn't write down. Um, so we're going to go in order of the album. Now, Dan, you told me just before there is actually an extended version of the album. Yes, there is. This it's uh, it's it's called the enhanced edition. But I'll be honest, it's I I wouldn't really call it enhanced. Really, it's just a eight minute clip. Oh, at the start saying hey hey uh, guys welcome to the album uh, and then okay. at the end saying thanks uh blinks which is their fan base they they call them blinks right cool awesome that i'm 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 glad you discovered that because i i didn't know there was a name for it but there we are that uh so the the only other thing i learned about uh with my limited research of blackpink is there's there but they belong to a phenomena in k-pop at the moment called girl crush um which is basically instead of kind of I, I don't know if you guys have seen any of the music videos or anything but obviously they're very attractive well choreographed girls um but instead of kind of appealing to the male market and being like hey look how attractive and sexy we are they kind of they appeal to like, or their their aim, or ever is like female fans who are like, oh, I want to be them. Basically. I can see that definitely with the songs on this, yeah, yeah. Mm. It's, it, it's yeah. definitely female fans and the gays, definitely. Yes, mm. I'm I'm sure. Well, I, I'm not sure actually. I I don't know, but I, I imagine, especially being on the Lady Gaga album, they, they've probably got some crossover. I um. I can confirm. I. So I listened to this a few times now. This album, I actually reach. I actually mentioned it to someone in work. I was listening to it okay. because her daughter is a massive K-pop fan, um, and she said, "Oh, I'll mention that to my daughter that you're listening to it and <laughs> see what she thinks." So I've actually got some outside opinions from a hardcore K-pop fan on this particular album. I mean, I can share them now or at the end. It's uh, up to you. At, at the end. We, we'll do it as yeah. like a, a feature review. Um, okay, I'm intrigued. Yeah, no, that's really cool, actually, because I, I was going to take the dive to see what how this album was received in like the K-pop fandom, but I was like, I, I don't have time. I, 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 that's, that's like an investigative journalist level of... Uh, of sort of yeah. investigation, I, yeah, uh, yeah. A rabbit hole. Yeah. Um, right. Cool. Let, let's dive in. So, the album uh, begins with the track "How You Like That." Now, this is one of their singles as well, I believe. They released before the release of the album. Um, so, I'll st- I'll start off with my thoughts, and we'll get the ball rolling and just jump on in or ever. Uh, so, th- these are the notes I've written down. Uh, th- these are the things I liked and disliked. I thought the bass was great with it, really beefy and sort of deep. Um, and the distorted synth stuff, which you kind of see with a lot of K-pop. It's not just Blackpink, obviously, but the kind of EDM like beats and stuff, really cool. The chorus was fine. It, it was all right. Um, but I really did like the uh, the verses and stuff, especially like the, K- the K-pop version of rap, I find is kind of cool. It- it's kind of similar to... J-pop kind of rap thing, but it's got its own style. I I quite like that. 
That's uh, yeah. How how did you I'm guys go and like say... that? Ah! <laughs> Sorry, continue. I'm gonna go out and say I don't think it was a good way to start off the album. I think it was one of the weaker tracks, mm. and I think okay. a mm. lot of the other tracks I felt were a lot more had a, a better appeal and should have yeah. gone first. I mean, I guess obviously it's, it's my own opinion, but I don't know. This yeah. one, this first track kind of felt a bit generic to me. It was kind of just a bit, yeah, this I, is a girl group track. Yeah. I, I, I didn't I, find anything kind of standout-ish about it. I a hundred percent agree with you there. Um, I didn't see much difference from Western pop, to be honest, on this song. I didn't, I couldn't feel any much difference, and uh, I think that's going to be a theme through a lot of the album for me, but not <laughs> all. So I was, I wasn't a fan. Uh, but like you said, Red, this is their single, is it not? Like yeah, this is so, their big single. Uh, I well, so I think there's like three songs from this that became sing. So I don't I don't have the release schedule unfortunately. I mean some of these may be released after the release of the album, right? I want to say how you like that was released before the album as a kind of like intro to it maybe or I I could be mixing that up. Again, I I need to do more research in future. Um Dan, what I, what do you think? Well, I I I'm it, it was one of the weaker of the tracks, but what I like about it, the the, the song, and generally the, generally the whole album is how unpredictable it goes, and how it kind of yeah. blends mm. different genres, and you and you you go in, and I, the thing is, I I think generic is uh, I wouldn't say the right right term, but out of all the songs, that does sound like like a track that is not. Doesn't have much of like variety, but I'd say after that things do change up a bit, and you're like, oh, hang on, hang on a sec, they okay, okay. you know what I mean? So I, I think it's like the song with the least personality. Mm, it started mm. off weak, but I think it, it afterwards with ice cream it grows. I'd say. Uh, well, yeah. uh, as we're on the topic of ice cream, that is the second track in the album, Ice Cream, and it features Selena Gomez, who is a American pop star? I think she was American or not. She was produced. on the Disney Channel. Yeah. And produced yeah. by Ariana Grande. Oh, right. Okay. Um, so, yeah, Ice Cream. Right, okay, so I I feel like this may be a bit of a unpopular opinion. I thought this was the weakest track of the album. Uh, it's all right, but, it, I mean, it, it's mildly, like, catchy, but... Yeah, I, I think it's a crowd pleaser, this one. I mm. I guess I don't know. I this is something about like the vocals and stuff are just kind of like it's basically what I've written down is this is my skip track of like if I wanted to re listen to the album, I'd be like, Oh no, okay, no, next. Uh I, I like the how deep the bass got in parts, that was nice. Uh if you got some bassy headphones, it, it it sounds good, but I no, I I not not a big fan. I agree that it's one of the weaker ones. I think it, it, because it had kind of a melodic chorus, it kind of had like a hook that got people mm. in. I can definitely see it being like a crowd pleaser, like a kind of, yeah, we want this one to try. I'm just thinking of the lyrics that. like, uh, you can double dip because I know you like me. Well, it's that's, that's very touching. <laughs> it's just a big <laughs> euphemism, isn't it? Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's... it's... I didn't like it. Um, yeah, I, I thing, really didn't I, like it. I no, I don't double dip it. when you're like with with chips. Like if you eat, like you know, you have a chip, you put it in in whatever no, I, I sauce. I feel like this think... this this might be more of a rice cream Dan. I don't know why I'm getting that feeling, but I feel like chips are probably not <laughs> the best analogy because like it's it's probably about ice cream. Oh no! <laughs> no one double dips with chips. Come on, that's that's that goes without saying. Yeah, yeah. That's what I was saying double. Ch- uh, although with ice cream, I I, I I don't know, but hmm, maybe so, I'm looking too into it too deep. Yeah. I feel, <laughs> I feel again that I I almost feel a lot with this album and with this song definitely because I did touch on some of their other things. Hmm. 
And this album seems to be focusing, and especially this song, on, on a Western <laughs> audience, even. Yeah. Or they're trying to oh, break yeah. into the West. Yeah. I've, and I've I don't like before. it because it's... Well, it's got um, Selena Gomez uh, on the track. Um, yeah. Uh, there are there's a couple of guests, but I'll I'll go to that you know when that comes. But uh, I'd say again, this is one of the the weaker ones with the guests. I yeah. I although I did like the you can double because it was quite catchy. You could yeah, I mean it, it's it's got a it's got a catchy like chorus and stuff, and like clearly, I mean uh, so I think this is by KY Entertainment, who are a big Korean thing. Yeah, and, like clearly it's been made. You know, it, it's been factory produced basically to be like catchy. Mm. It's got all the like the hooks and stuff that you'd expect. It's you know, it it doesn't. It's not a bad sounding song. I just there's a lot of producers, a lot of producers on this, um, like yeah. on the, this album. But I'd say then it seems that ice cream is not very popular, and indeed we were all a little bit savage. Oh, uh... what, what a lead into the third track. Uh, and that is Pretty Savage. Um, so this, I believe, is just Blackpink. So they had theirs, then a feature, then uh, back to them. So uh, this is the second time that Blackpink mentioned they're in my area, which is <laughs> yes. w- which is when I started getting slightly concerned. Uh, do make sure, by the way, that if you are um, if you are in for the night or ever, do lock your front doors just in case. Uh, you can never be sure. Just in case Black Pink show up, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so Pretty Savage, I thought was one of the better tracks of the album, one of my favourites, I think. Um, yeah, I, I think this is where it starts picking up. Yeah, I especially, what I quite liked was the guitar breaks and stuff. So it'd be like, it'd be the dub stuff, and then there'd be like the light kind of guitar things. Um, and also I put down, this, is, uh, this isn't a qualitative statement at all, but I can picture this song being the backtrack to an Overwatch play of the game compilation. Mm. Oh, oh yeah. now that you've mentioned it, oh, mm. you kind of ruined the song for me, Jesus. Oh. Well, it, it's kind of got this sort of like, it's like the build up, and then there's like the do, 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 and sort of yeah. like, I can picture the, oh, you're jumping, headshot to the beat, and then it's like, you know. I, I, it, maybe it's just me, but I could picture it in my head. I. Agree I can with definitely you. picture it, right? But it's—I liked it. I thought it was this. I think <laughs> this could have been. You have slightly tarnished it, but I think this would have been a much better choice to start off the album with, in my opinion. Ooh. It's got like a kind of, it's got a kind of anthemic feel to it in a way, and mm. I think it would have been good at the start. But then again, I guess it does kind of make sense to have this as like the upswing because we're going through a couple of good tracks now. I think. Yeah. But yeah, no, this was definitely one of the better ones for me. I quite like the st- like uh, the the rapping style on this album at the start because mm. mm. well even at the start of the song it's got like a quirky piano uh, jingle at the start and I was like okay that's that's a bit left field yeah. and then and then the um, uh, the the rapping com- comes in is quite like um, kind of like uh, sp- sporadic or a little bit unpredictable and I, I quite like that. Um, uh, my only gripe, I I know this is really nitpicking, but I really don't like the. I think, <laughs> yeah, that's part of what gives it that play of the yeah game, yeah yeah play it's, of the game Overwatch vibe. I mean, that kind of it's in <laughs> the same wheelhouse is... as like I mean for years I've watched loads of like rocket league like crazy goal compilations and this is straight out of one of those of kind of like <laughs> oh, it would fit monster in a rocket cat. league game <laughs> like monster cat has probably used like 12 different songs that sound quite similar to this in like you know their compilation albums and stuff i so i i'm going to say i didn't like it again <laughs> okay <laughs> apart from yeah. The one respite for me in this was the acoustic guitar bit. Mm. I actually like that, and that's yeah. Maybe oh, this is a bit. I'm trying to like with with this album so far. I've been trying to take myself out of it and say, you know, I really don't like this music, but 
Mm. I'm lo- trying to look at it objectively, but it's very difficult, I found. I, I can do it better with other things. Yeah. With music, it's quite hard. I mean, uh, but to- this... The acoustic was nice. I liked that. And there is a mm. track later on, which I actually quite liked. Like, uh, well, to, to be honest, to be honest, anyway, I kind of... I think going objective is the wrong way to go anyway for Listen Toys, because, like, I kind of want all four of our opinions. So I think, like, going more neutral or taking too much of a step back could just be bad, because it'd be like, this is good. Yeah, that was good. That was good. That was a structurally sound song. On to the next one. So, like, I think it's very hard to be objective with music. It's, yeah, it's so, it's, an, it's an subjective experience. That's the whole point. Yeah, and I mean, yeah. honestly, I'm more than happy to like cover an album and someone just be like, "Oh shit, it was all shit." God, I hate that album. Fucking hell! And just like, because <laughs> if, if that's your feelings, uh, that's your feelings. That's like this. I, I'm not gonna say that. Uh, I don't think it's that far. This was. Out of the three so far, this was the best one okay. so far. Yeah, but... I don't think it's a great track. I think it's just the start of the uptick, I'd say. Yeah. Yeah, well, let's continue that uptick then with the fourth track in the album. We're about midway through now with Betty Wanna featuring Cardi B. I really like this one. Who is another I thought, American I really like this one. Person? I was literally about to say the same thing. I think Cardi B is the best uh, guest on this uh album um mm. easily yeah um which is which... weird because i don't usually like cardi b stuff I, I usually kind of not that fond of her but this this collab just really worked for me it had a really like cool 90s vibe to me or like early noughties it was kind of like kind of girly poppy back then it, it felt almost nostalgic in a way and i don't know it just it was it was a good one for me hmm. i i um <laughs> Hey, um, I may rock the boat slightly again then. Uh, my note for this was, it's fine. It sounds like a regular pop song. Yeah. Uh, I, I, it, it, it wasn't bad, but it's... And it wouldn't necessarily be a skip track either, but personally, it was just... Basically, if I'd heard this on like the radio or playing in the background somewhere, I wouldn't for a second be like, whoa, K-pop, hello, what? Yeah. It's just like, uh, yeah, it's fine. But so I was, on this album... Yeah. When I listened to it, because it was the first time I listened to it, there are three songs on the entire album that I've actually liked, like on Spotify mm. and added to like my spot. Yeah, I like songs. Okay. This was the first one that I liked. Ah, this is the first okay. one that I was like, no, I'm, I actually like this enough to to listen to it outside mm. of this. Nice. So yeah, I don't know this one. Uh, this one. I'll be interested to know the others. Uh, yeah, it was it was all right. <laughs> um, yeah, again. Similar opinions. I'm not going to go on too much, really. But it was all right. Hmm. I'd say the last one was better, pretty savage than this. But uh... yeah, uh, I I've got nothing more to say. <laughs> it's uh, and unless anyone else does, I'll move on. Yeah, go for it. Go for it. Right. Um... The next track is "Love Sick Girls." Now this. Okay, so sorry. Going back, I forgot to mention this. Ice cream was also released as a single and actually got quite high on the billboard charts in America. So oh. clearly the Selena Gomez feature helped there. Um, yeah. Now Love Sick Girls, I know for a fact, was also, I think, released as a single and is the only music videos of, there I wa- of theirs I watched because it was like, well, I need to watch something of theirs to know what they look like at least and like what they're going for. Uh, and I'll simply read out my my notes for lovesick girls banger best song just a genuinely fun song i, I agree oh, I, it's the best I, song of the album i agree i think it's it's pretty good uh, i it reminds me um of like cindy Lauper's song girls just want to have fun <laughs> but it's like a yeah. modern take yeah uh, I, I a k-pop because it's got like um like uh, bubble popping sounds that I noticed. Yeah, and that's it's... exactly what I said. I said it's got a very bu- bubble gummy feeling. Yeah. I, I yeah, and I like this it, one. It was all right. very, like I feel like I've eaten like a pack of uh, gummy bears. Uh, you know, on this track, it's very, it's very sweet, almost sickly sweet, but I, I quite like it. Um, and uh, apparently, uh, David Guetta 
Greta. 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 Oh, did he, wait, did Dave get to work on this? Ah. Ah. Uh, okay. Yeah. yeah there I, you go. It. It. Yeah. It kind of sounds like his kind of stuff. Like obviously more poppy, but yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. I think I'm going to be the boat rocker on this one then, because this was one of my least favorites. Oh, I did okay. not enjoy this one okay. at all. Mm-hmm. It really bored me. I, I I listened to it and I kind of didn't feel anything. It was like, oh, this is just. Kind I will of, say very background music to me. I feel like it's yeah. something that would come on like in a club when you're a teenager. Yeah, I I, I, I kind of sit down for a song. Yeah, I track, dare you yeah. that. Yeah. Wasn't wasn't up my street. That's I will say, that isn't even my favourite song on the album. Oh, okay. Wow. I, I I think it's pretty good, but it's not the the best one. Okay. I It's definitely... It gets my vote for best track. Uh, yeah, it's, same, Red. It's the only one I've added to a playlist as a, like... Yeah, I'll listen to this again. I mean, I may listen to this album again in a few months. I don't know, possibly. But yeah. It's the only one I kind of... I did actually start bobbing along on the chorus on this a bit. It's the only song on you that's done that. I, so. I was singing it in work slightly, like just to myself, and I was like, I hope no one asks what I'm singing. I, it, it'll take too long to explain. It's, uh, But what, what, what won't take too long to explain <laughs> is the next track, Crazy Over You, which may take a bit of a while to explain. Uh, <laughs> Good bridge. So Good bridge. My, my notes for this... Uh, are as follows. A song about being a yander. This is pretty good, too. The deep bass kind of suited how sinister the song is. Cause this is a little bit dark, I find. Or, like, sinister. Maybe not dark. But you know what I mean. I, I quite like... This was one of my favourite tracks. Hmm. Um, uh, I... Because the, the instrumentals of this uh, track is... is the It's the most unpredictable song, because I, I, I yes. feel, because, like... It, because you got all this bubble pop, um, songs previously, and then this one is, um, I I don't even know like what what is playing if you, you know what I mean. I'm trying well, to think. What is that? I um, I I actually listened to it and I've put, uh, I've called it an Arabic themed kind of backtrack. The funny thing is, um, what was I listening to recently? I randomly got into something. I got into Arabic trap music. Okay. And okay. they had a similar back in track to that. The oh. instruments felt very um, Middle Eastern. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, mm-hmm. I kind of get you. Um, yeah, obviously, I and I appreciated that. I quite liked that. Um, I wasn't so hot on the lyrics or anything, but, you know... I yeah, thought they well, were kind of great. Yeah. The, the lyrics, I think, were what stood out to me because it's just like, it is literally about being a yander. It's sort of like loving a man so much that you're going to kill all the other women that hang out with him. And if he like betrays you to kill him and stuff, it's like, oh, all right then. Was there a theme to this album? Were they all about love or being attractive in some way? That's my only <laughs> gripe. Kind of. My only gripe about this album, it it like I I don't know what theme they're going with. Um and like it it almost feels like a playlist more than an album. I I think they should just call it the playlist <laughs> instead of the album. I don't have album. a gripe with that. I don't mind yeah. when albums do that. I don't think an album necessarily needs to have an overall. Oh no, I'm not saying it's a bad song. Songs sound good together. I think it doesn't need to have. It's nice when it's nice when there is one, but I don't think I need it. It needs. I... And this song for me, because I just think it was very okay. I, I don't have any strong feelings either way, so I'll let you guys go on with it. Um, I, I, I have to disagree with you on that. I feel like there was a theme in you in the okay. whole album. You like like it, I yeah. said. I felt it was all to do with love or girl power or being attractive, kind basically. Of. I, th- I think the, that's, that was sort of the point of it. Because, I mean, this is obviously the album. So, like, I, I, I think the point of it was to be like, what is Blackpink? This is what Blackpink is. It's kind of like... Oh, yeah. Like, introducing Blackpink, basically. It is what I got from it. Because, as, as you said, like, all the themes are basically what they're kind of about. Um, I, I, I want to read... This track, yeah, it tracks a little bit from the overall theme of 
the kind of girl power thing. I think the message of this song, the kind of Yandere um, influences, like you said, a very kind of the opposite of everything else is very like, oh, I'll just do whatever you want. I'm all about doing whatever I can to please this man. Like, uh, uh, yeah. uh, I it, like I read the lyrics because one of the lyrics that stood out to me was, "Met him, then get him. I make sure we stay. Got the venom to dead him." If he want a snake? No, if as in if he want a snake, if he wants to be a snake to to hook up with other girls behind another girl's back. Oh. All right. I mean, I, I hate to break Here this. Here you too. go. I caught you a snake. If he <laughs> want a snake. No, it's if if it's if if he want a snake, if he wants to, if he intends to snake, then I shall. Be forced, you shall be the repercussions. I, f- I shall be forced to administer this venom unto him to to <laughs> render him deceased for his betrayal and his infidelity is what they were going for, Dan. Uh. Um, however, unfortunately, they, they didn't take a step back and go all Shakespearean. I think they just used slang, which... Uh, I mean, that is another thing. In this album, we do get a lot of like very modern slang. Um, yeah. yeah, right. Definitely time with the kids. So we've got the penultimate track now. Love to hate me. Uh, I don't think this is featuring anyone, was it, Dan, or produced by anyone or something? Because you mentioned there were a few, but I'm assuming. Um, n- not to my knowledge. Um, nothing that I um, okay. know. So, uh, uh, so splish splash. So <laughs> yes, thank you. So. <laughs> My my note for this is much like Betty Wanna, this song is kind of a regular pop song and stuff. The the synth and bass is pretty cool, but this it, this is one of the ones I struggle to remember what it sounds like. If that makes sense, I am gonna go completely the other way. This is my favorite track of the whole album. Ooh, okay. I thought this was a really really strong track. It had like a kind of cool R and B vibe to me. It yeah. kind of had like early Destiny's Child Mystique kind of vibes. Ah, and I yeah. thought, mm. um, listening to it, I, th- this is, again, it's the second one I um, added to my actual likes. Oh, and okay. I vibed with it. I, I wow. definitely vibed with it. This one, I, I listened to like a couple of times on repeat because I was like, oh, yeah. Tim like, was so impressed, he's so. breaking out the, like, the, the recent slang with vibe. I, <laughs> I'm well, down I with the that. kid. So, I, like, I really... Um, uh, like this track as well. Okay, Dad, like you've, the... got to use, you've got to use a slang term to describe it, though. Uh, Did you dab when you listened to it? Did I dab? Uh, <laughs> I, I I didn't dab, but I double dipped. <laughs> there, there we are. Oh, oh, this must dear. be fucking painful for anyone under the age of 20 or something listening. Oh, well, I, I sincerely well, which... apologise. <laughs> <laughs> the album is aimed at people of that type of graphic, Oh yeah, no, undoubtedly. So... I, <laughs> honestly, I've made a horrible mistake here because I think this video, one of the two hashtags YouTube allows me at the top is going to be Blackpink. So I'm kind of hoping this isn't like sort of like targeted by very angry Blackpink fans. If you are listening... No, I hope that... it is. Okay. Oh wait, yeah, no, 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 views. Yeah, oh, comment, comment how much you hate me. Please, it's great for the algorithm. Love this was your intention me. all along. Uh, yes, um, I will go with that. Sorry, continue. I was going to say, um, I I don't know what it was, but I got weird Grimes vibes from this track. What? Okay, yeah, really? yeah, there was something about it uh, that felt I... a little bit like Grimes. It wasn't, like, not the whole track, definitely, but there was, like... <laughs> I feel yeah. like, is it, right, I may be wrong here, is it the slightly higher register that they're singing in? Because I remember this is slightly higher pitch, because as Dan said, the splish splash part, that kind of like is a little bit grimesy, and that's kind of like a higher register and a bit more like laid back kind of, maybe it's just me, I don't know. It could be, but I definitely got some sort of vibe of that from this track, it, not for the whole track, but... Hmm. Like a little, a little, a little sprinkling of it, if you get me. Yeah. Well, what I like is the, you know, during like uh, the 40 seconds or so in, like 
all you hear is just bass and you hear them uh kind of uh, talking and stuff and i really like that da da i need you ba da 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 and then and then it mm. it drops i really like that i um it worked yeah it worked so i i i think i'm <sighs> I think that basically the if I'm I'm if they had side B's right like I would mm-hmm. say that I prefer the songs that aren't like charted as like singles if you know yeah. what I mean like mm. as the better ones than the yeah. um the ones that were released so uh yeah actually was this released as a single no it wasn't it think wasn't think so it was no it 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 does it does feel to me like an album track. I, I don't know. You just get those kind of senses that mm. whenever you come across a single track, you're like, yeah, this is a single track. This is like catchy. It's that like right level. Whereas this is slightly like weirder. Um, right. And moving on to slightly weirder, we've got the very last track, which is you never know. Um, and yeah, this. As as my notes say, was quite the unexpected departure. It's kind of like mm. it's it's a ballad basically. Yeah, it's like a chilled, stripped back ballad. There's, I mean, there is like synth in the background, but it's 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 really minimal. It's mm. kind of like it's just them singing. This is like demonstrating their singing talents, I suppose. And I thought it was a really good album closer. I, 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 oh, I agree. This. I was in the exact same boat. It was the come and down. I will admit, I'm, a, I am a sucker for a um, nice, like, kind of emotional closer, kind of melancholic vibe. And mm. this one, I think, was really, really nice. Like, it was just like a, it was, it was kind of chill in a way, but also kind of had feeling to it. And this is the third one that I actually certified liked. Um, but yeah, like you said, perfect closer. Really <coughs> nice kind of, kind of nostalgia feeling to it, and yeah, really, really like this one. Nice. Tom, what do you think? If it was all right, yeah, I, I mean, it's more <laughs> my thing, but at the same time, it kind of felt like other stuff I've listened to. There was mm. nothing that really stood it out for me in the back in the noise of every other pop song that's out there really but uh yeah it was okay bit generic for my liking but that's just me it's not maybe you guys thought differently and could see something special in it i think what i like is uh i i'd say this album was like i know i i joked and said it was like a playlist but i would say it's more like an ep but what i i do like you know i mean me personally personally not all the tracks hit super hard but the ones that do are really good yeah i i think um like i i think basically the the last half of the album for me was uh you know kind of enjoyable but the 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 first half i you know main singles i um didn't didn't enjoy as much not that they're like technically not bad or anything it was just more of a personal thing like so so yeah um, yeah. Right. Well, so before we do our overall wrap ups and potential scores out of ten, um, Tom, you have a guest review by the work colleague's daughter. So, th- <laughs> uh, what everyone's um, been waiting for. So, so I think I agree with her. Having listened to some songs, other songs that they've done, uh, she didn't say much. Obviously, it was said to me via someone in work but she said it's not a good album uh the producers kind of forced a direction on the album uh and they didn't have much input themselves apparently Uh, uh so she wasn't a fan and i think i agree with her i think like i was saying earlier i feel this album was their attempt to break into a Western audience. Hmm. And again, I agree with Dan. I think the first half of the album uh, isn't great. And the second half, it gets a bit better, I think, because I think the first half is their, like, it's their tracks 
that really are very Western orientated. Hmm. Um, I I went out and listened to a few other tracks of theirs, and they felt a lot different to the ones on this album. Um, and to be honest, I preferred them. Uh, also, so that's ju- kind of my opinion on that. Just got to say, that girl sounds like that's she actually cool. knows her stuff. Can can she just replace Dan for the for the podcast? That's so. <laughs> Jesus Christ, she, yeah, she's well, done some it's fucking... It's a really interesting concept, though, like how the context matters when you're listening to it, because if you had kind of a wider scope of what their stuff is, it really does skew your your opinion of what the album is, because I thought this was okay, but I guess mm. if I had listened to more of their background stuff, like more of their other stuff, it might have made me be more critical of it, I guess. Mm. Mm. Well, so... I, well, I think this will lead us perfectly then into scores and brief overall reviews. Um, so overall, I would say there's a couple of standout tracks that don't quite make up for the bland noise of the rest of it. Mm. So I'd give it a 5 out of 10. Okay. Uh, Dan? I'm... Uh, um... I'm also with uh, Tim. Um, I'm going to give it a five. I think some of the tracks, like the the like, like I said earlier, the opening was didn't really bring that much for me. But of the, the the tracks that I really liked were the ones on the second half, and um, you know, highlights included uh, you know, "Love Sick Girls," "Crazy Over You," "Love to Hate Me," and "You Never Know." But I feel. I feel like it's overproduced, personally. Um, but, um, but otherwise, I'm I'm kind of like I enjoyed it enough so that if there's another record that they release, I may when. hear it again. And, Not if uh, it's going to be when. Yeah, it should sure be when. Be, yeah, these are literally uh, the most popular K-pop girl band. Like li- yeah. literally. Yeah. So I'm 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 I will uh, listen to uh, the the wherever they put out next, because I'm kind of intrigued. I, I I I liked how they blend different genres, and it was, like, unpredictable. And I like things that are unpredictable, but... Um, so it's just a case of wait and see. Nice. Uh, Tom, what would what would you give it on a 1 to 10 scale? I'm going to give it a 3 out of 10. Ooh, uh, Ooh scathing. Well, very harsh. I think, you know, 1s and 2s are just deservant of really terrible I mean, albums one, one they're just basic- objectively terrible one is basically unlistenable as in like it's difficult to get through kind of like yeah so yeah yeah um, i will see if those dance choices i i listened to this album and i was i was speaking to ridian about this i said it all blends together into this very generic pop album for me. I can't distinguish it. There was one song I liked, which was Love Sick Girls. Hmm. And the rest of it, though, I just really didn't like. And like I said before, I, I feel like they're pandering to a Western demographic, or they're trying to. Uh, that might well work for a Korean demographic as well, but I really didn't like it, so yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, from what I heard, like the um of of the brief stuff I saw, like I have heard a lot of people say that like, oh, they're going too western in that like, it's it's eroding a bit of what makes K-pop K-pop, and it's just turning mm. into pop. Um, so that leaves me. So my my overall score, I I don't know, maybe I've not been. To that critical or something, I I would give it a six or a ten because I thought it was an above average album. In that, like, there were th- there were a few like tracks I didn't really care for, um, but I think overall, kind of the opposite to Dan here. I kind of like if an album's going for the produced kind of angle of the you know like loads of varying different like you know, maximum kind of sound and stuff. I like you to go a bit overboard with it, and, like, I think that's what I kind of liked about this. It felt very heavily produced, and it's like, well, 
if you're going to go part way, you might as well go until, like, everything is a synth. Everything is, like, tuned as if. So I'm going to give it a 6 or a 10. Because, um, yeah, I thought, it's all right. Um, so we're moving on to the very final part of the episode now. Now, I'm, I'm guessing we're not going to have a nomination this time, but I'm going to introduce everyone at home to the final part of the Listen Toys episode, and that is... The Certified Banner! Section. <laughs> Thank you, Tim. Um, where basically, uh, we're going to do this every time, where we can nominate uh, up to two different tracks each as a Certified Banger, which is a track that we really enjoyed, that we thought was good enough that we'd go on the official Listen Toys Certified Banger playlist. Uh, which I'll be making on Spotify. Uh, I'll, I'll link it below, along with a link to this album, of course, if for some reason you haven't listened to it beyond listening to this. Um, so, yeah, so basically, are there any tracks, boys, that you think would be good enough to go on a best of playlist uh, for the listeners and yourselves to listen to in the future? Um, I'm going to say the uh, You Never Know. I, f- I feel like that one was quite okay. nice. So it was was like, it a banger, though? Is it a banger? Yeah. Oh. B- basically, is it a classic, Dan? Like, is it, oh, some- right. is it something mm. that you, you... Let's say, you know, you forget about the album, but you're like, oh, yo, we had that one track. Oh, I haven't listened to that in a while. I'm going to put this on right now. Yes. I'm going to say uh, Crazy uh, Over You, then. Okay, I mean, you, you don't you don't have to nominate anything, but uh, I'd personally put Love Sick Girls as a nomination. Uh, however, so both Tim and Tom, both of you said no, I believe, yeah? Yeah, yeah, no. I said no. Uh, unfortunately, that has failed the nomination criteria. So the criteria, for those interested, three-fourths of us have to agree on a certified banger. Uh, this means, that obviously, the playlist will be very exclusive. Uh, so I won't be making the playlist right now because I don't think Spotify lets you make an empty playlist. Or maybe it does. I don't know. <laughs> we um, can share this playlist out when we're all done. I yeah, imagine. well, I, I'm gonna. I'll, I think you can make an empty playlist. Actually, I'll probably I'll leave a link anyway. So if you guys want to follow, um, so if you I don't know miss out on a few listen toys, you can still catch up and be like, oh, that's pretty cool. They've added this track. Um, now, so it's going to be empty, but maybe next time. It will have a track or two. Uh, but the question is, what what's up next? Well, that is the question. So, on screen, where literally none of you can see, so you're going to have to take my word for it. Ooh. I have three of your names on a wheel. I have Dan, Tom, and Tim. Now, <gasps> behind the scenes, I've asked all of them to pick an album or two that they'd kind of like to listen to. Now, I've specified... These are not albums they're super familiar with. They've listened to like 20 times. These are albums they may have listened to once or twice. Or maybe they're from artists they're fans of, but they've never listened to the album. Uh, Much like this album, I kind of want to dive in together, basically, to really uh, think. In the future, we may do a special episode where one of us gets to introduce one of our favourite albums, and then we'll go through it. Uh, but, regardless, I'm waffling now, so I'm just going to spin the wheel. You may be able to hear this at home, actually, because I'm recording desktop audio. Ooh, yeah, you will. It's landed on Tom! So, Tom, it is up to you to suggest our next album. Uh, so please tell us the name of the artist and the name of the album. Right, so this is a... This is an artist we all... All of us hear but not the audience, most slightly. Cured a lot of in Welsh class in school. Uh, the artist is Super Furry Animals. Okay. And ah. the album that I've picked is Rings Around the World. Rings Around the World. Well, wow. I'll uh, chuck up a picture of that on screen right now for people at home. Um, do you want to give literally a sentence-long description of who Super Furry Animals are? They're a uh, they're a Welsh band. Um, they were popular. What did you say? Like 90s. late nineties, early two thousands. Yeah. Okay. Uh, they've got a great vocalist. I've person I picked them 
because I've listened to was it Griff Reese's other stuff, but not you know the thing he was known for, Super Furry Animals. Ah. I've literally only listened to a couple of Super Furry Animal songs a couple of times, and I was nice. thinking when Red asked this, I thought, you know what? I've always wanted to listen to them. I listened to these songs. I really like them. So I picked an album uh, that I thought, well, oh. had one of the songs on. And, uh, yeah, basically. Okay. Well, talk about genre whiplash. We are going from Korean pop to Welsh pop kind of soft rock kind of stuff, I guess. Um, so if you do want to play along at home or join our Listen Toys Club, uh, I will... Hmm... Yeah, I'll put it. I'll put a uh, a link to the album below. So if you'd like to listen along to us, we're gonna go away now and listen to that for the next week or two, maybe, uh, and then we'll record our thought as we did in this episode today. Uh, so look out for Super Furry Animals in our next episode, and that about wraps everything up. Well, thank you, boys, for joining me on this musical journey through Korea's number one girl band at the time of recording. Obviously, that may change. That's right. It's it's been pretty fun. I th- I think it's it's a good start. Uh, you know we're going to be bouncing from genre to genre. Hopefully, mm. maybe discovering some favourites in the meantime. And that is the end of episode one of Listen Toys. Thank you very much for Listen Toysing to this episode. And until next time, <laughs> goodbye.